Well, we regret the uh, occasion that I must be up here <laughs> because that means David is not uh, feeling well, suffering from a little diverticulitis, and uh, that can be troublesome for sure. <clears throat> but like I've said before, when I get up here on, a say, a Wednesday night for a uh, supposedly a one subject deal. I get to talk on what I want to talk on. <laughs> so, and you may find it interesting, you may not. <clears throat> but what I want to talk about tonight is uh, has to do with the matter of fellowship. We've had to deal with uh, these matters here in the past couple of years. It's been a very serious matter. <clears throat> but I know that the uh, matter of fellowship is a, a important topic in the Bible because it, it's it talks about it so much. It either using the word fellowship directly or some uh, other uh, words that certainly give the uh, idea of fellowship. I know immediately after the uh, church was established, we read in Acts, the uh, second chapter, verse 42, that they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship in the breaking of bread and in prayer. So they were doing something that uh, comprised fellowship, and it was immediately after the church was started. So I know it's, I know this is important. We read in John, the first chapter, verses 1 through 5, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, and we have looked upon, and our hands have handled concerning the word of life. The life was manifested, and we have seen and bear witness and declare to you that eternal life, which was with the Father and was manifested to us, that which we have seen and heard, we declare to you that you may have fellowship with us. These things that have been declared that he just uh, that has spoken of, really talking, he's talking about Jesus, uh, that's been declared to you so you can have fellowship with us. So there's something there that that uh, lends itself to fellowship. And he says, Truly our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. And these things we write to you that your joy may be full. So I know that fellowship, you know, properly constituted, will lead to the joy of the uh, Christian. He said, This is the message, verse 5, This is the message which we have heard from Him to declare to you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. And if we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. So I know uh, at least uh, the fellowship that, that's being talked about here cannot exist while we walk in darkness. And when we walk in light, of course, that's the light of the gospel, the gospel truth. It says, but we, if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, and he is the light, we have fellowship with one, one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. This is a conditional fellowship. We have to walk in the light, as he is in the light, in order to enjoy this fellowship. And he goes on to say in verse 8, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. You cannot be in fellowship without the truth being in you. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You cannot exist in a state of unrighteousness and be in fellowship. <clears throat> if we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. So this aspect of a uh, Christian's life Fellowship is important, but what is it and why is it so central to the Christian? The noun fellowship is translated from the word, Greek word koinonia, which the Greek scholar Thayer defines as fellowship, association, community, communion, joint participation, in contact, and you can see from this that 
just the word fellowship can have non-spiritual uh, meanings or meanings, you know, you can have two robbers. They can be in fellowship because they're, they're sharing the loot together. <laughs> so, so fellowship, as we're talking about, is a state of communion, partnership, joint participa participation, sharing, being a partaker with. To be in fellowship with God is to be in communion with him. Paul concluded uh, the second letter to the Corinthians by saying, The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. So I know the communion is, uh, has, has this idea of uh, joint participation. And this idea uh, of uh, fellowship, association, sharing, communion, what have you, uh, was set forth long ago in Amos 3 and 3, 3 and following. Can two walk together unless they are agreed? Now, we always say that, you know, if you're going to be in fellowship with someone, you have to be agreed on the doctrine, and you do. But this just is just a true statement. Regardless of the uh, fellowship or the relationship, you can have, like I say, two thieves. They can be in agreement on a bank job or what have you, and they're in fellowship. Or you can have two Christians that have, uh, are in agreement on doctrine, and they walk together because they're agreed. Now, the, this passage says that one can be in fellowship with those out of fellowship with God. If you're out of fellowship with God, you can be, if you want to call it fellowship, you can have a joint participation with somebody that's also out of fellowship with God. It, this, is, this idea is further emphasized in 2 Corinthians 6, chapter, verses 14 through 16. <clears throat> Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship has righteous with lawlessness, and what communion has light with darkness, and what accord has Christ with Belial, or what has a believer with an unbeliever, and what agreement has a temple of the God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God, <clears throat> and as God has said, I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. So he's contrasting two things that are, that are totally incompatible. You cannot have fellowship with uh, darkness. You cannot have fellowship with unrighteousness and, uh, and say that you're righteous yourself. It's an incompatibility that just cannot exist together. We gather, gather from this passage that, <clears throat> well, that fellowship is important. And it is an, an essential characteristic of the Christian. One who is in fellowship with God can rightly be in fellowship with those who are in fellowship with God and with no other. But exactly why is fellowship so important? Keep in mind that man was created in God's image. Genesis, the first chapter, verses 26 through 28. It reads, Then God said, Let's make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish, seed, and birds, and so forth. So God created man in his own image, and the image of God created him and male and female, he created them. <clears throat> it cannot be the case that man was created in the physical image of God because God is not physical. He's a spiritual being. So therefore, there's, there must be some aspect of God in which man, man shares a likeness uh, with God. <clears throat> In 2 Peter, the first chapter, verses 1 through 11, we read, Simon Peter, a bondservant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ, grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, as his divine power has given us 
given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. But also for this very reason that you just enumerated, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, brotherly kindness love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted, even to blindness, and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I want to focus on the uh, uh, wording of verse 4. Partakers of the divine nature. Of course, in this context, divine is that which pertains to God. <clears throat> and nature is that which characterizes a person or thing, or in this case, God. In combination, divine nature refers to God. Of course, we cannot be God, but we can be holy, for he is, he is holy, 1 Peter 1, verse 16. Based on the Greek tense used in 2 Peter uh, 1, verse 4, we can partake of the divine nature now. And that doesn't mean we're omni this and omni that, uh, but we still take part of the divine nature. Now, how do we do this? Well, we read in Colossians, the third chapter, verses 1 through 11. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, which, where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. <clears throat> Set your mind on things above, not on things of the, on the earth. For you died, and your life is hidden with, hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Therefore, put to death your members which were, are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience in which you yourselves once walk when you lived in them. <clears throat> so there was a time that these individuals were not partaking of the divine nature, but they put these things away, and now they're partaking of the divine nature. <clears throat> but now you yourselves are to put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another, since you have put off the old man with its deeds. And you have put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him, the divine image, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Not only in this life are we able to partake of the divine nature, but also in the life to come. Paul writes in 1 John, the third chapter, verses 1 through 3, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called children of God. Therefore the world does not know us, because it did not know him. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be, but we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him we shall partake of that divine nature, for we shall see him as he is. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself 
as he is pure. So it's a proactive situation. It's something that you must do. And if we shall be like him, it is because that which we heard from the beginning, that is, the gospel. It abides in us, allowing us to abide in the Son and in the Father. In 1 John, the second chapter, verses 24 and 25, reads, Therefore let that abide in you which you heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son and in the Father. You will partake of that divine nature. And this is the promise that he has promised us, eternal life. That's our, our hope. This partaking of the divine nature or failure to do so has its consequences. First, we must obtain the like precious faith. That's the first one of the uh, Second Peter passage that we read. But the faith, faith must first uh, be cultivated by adding to it virtue, knowledge, self-control, perseverance, godliness, brotherly, kindness, and love. For if we abound in these things, we will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, verse 8. We will make our call and election sure, verse 10, first part. And we will be prevented from stumbling, verse 10, second part. We will thereby be supplied an abundant entrance into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, verse 11. Jesus said that goes to prepare a place, that he goes to prepare a place for us. If not, he would have told us so. John 14, chapter, verses 2 and 3. Jesus has always told us what we need to know to attain eternal life. One who lacks these things is short-sighted, and fellowship with God is impossible. Not only is fellowship with God impossible, fellowship with faithful Christians is also impossible. In fact, fellowship among faithful Christians is possible only because they first have fellowship with God. As quoted above, if we walk in the light as he's in the light, we have fellowship with one, one another. It's conditional. If man have, men have the same physical father, they are brothers in the flesh. When two or more have the same spiritual father, they partake of the, the same divine nature and are therefore brothers in the spirit. To walk in the light is to partake of the divine nature. Two, therefore, cannot be in fellowship if one does not partake of the divine nature. To walk in the light, to partake of the divine nature, one must satisfy the conditions of walking in the light of gospel truth. One must hear the saving gospel, Romans 10, verse 14, and believe it, Mark 16, chapter verses 15 and 16. One must believe that Jesus of the gospel is the Christ, John 8, 24, John 20, verses 30 to 31, Romans 1, 16. One who would partake of the divine nature must repent of their sins. Luke 13, chapter verse 3 and verse 5. Luke 24, verse 40, 47, Acts 2, 38, and Acts 17, verse 30. One who would partake of the divine nature must confess that the Christ is the Son of God. <clears throat> Mark 16, 16, Acts 8, 37, Romans 10, 9 through 10. And in 1 Timothy 6 12, and there are others also. And one must be baptized, that is, immersed in water for the remission of sins. Mark 16 16, John 3 verse 5, Acts 2 38, 41 and 22, and uh, uh, chapter 22 and verse 16, 1 Peter 3 20 and 21, and there are other passages too that <clears throat> support this uh, 
necessity of being baptized in water for the remission of sins. Only by obedience to these things that I've just enumerated here can one attain fellowship with God. That is, to walk in the light, as see in the light, and as his son also in the light. If you are not walking in the light, you cannot be in fellowship with God. If you are not in fellowship with God, you cannot be in fellowship with other faithful Christians. So we want to offer the opportunity this evening for uh, those who would want to partake of the divine nature, but yet have not complied with its conditional requirements. Or maybe one is so sinned to be out of fellowship, and we'd like to allow the opportunity to make correction there also as we stand and sing. <clears throat> 